the color replacement tool in Photoshop is a pretty cool tool. I use it all the time. Uh, what it does is it works by sampling the original colors and replacing them with your selected foreground color, aka it paints the selected color over the existing color. Now let's go ahead and change our foreground color. Let's change it to blue. Click OK. And then you'll see the plus sign in the middle of the circle. If we zoom in, whatever pixel is selected by the color, you can see the pixel outlines here. And then if we click down, it'll change that color into your foreground color. And say we want to just paint all this yellow into a blue. We'll just come here. Let's keep painting. And it changes that color. It's pretty self-explanatory in the name color replacement tool. It just replaces that color with your foreground color. Right? And it does an awesome job of keeping the shadows and the highlights intact. And that's why I use it all the time, right? Because I, I need the shadows and the highlights to stay intact. I don't need to mess them up. If you just take your regular brush, right, and you paint, you see the difference. It doesn't get all those black and white details. It doesn't keep all those details. It just paints one color. So the top options, uh, first, obviously, we got the tool preset box for any presets you have. Then we got the brush preset picker. You can change the brush angle the brush roundness, the size, and the hardness from here. You can also search for brushes. It's got recently used tools right here. And then it's got your brush gallery with all your saved brushes down here. After that, we got blend mode. And this only has four modes. You got hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. Um, usually, you're going to keep it changed to color. But you can choose other ones and play around with them. Um, next, we got some sampling options. And this is how you're going to sample the source color. So continuous, I usually leave it on continuous. So you see the crosshair in the middle of the circle. Like when I zoomed in, you see where the crosshair is at, right? So continuous, if I click and drag... It's going to continuously sample pixels. So if you click and drag and keep going back and forth, you're going to keep sampling new pixels. And you're going to catch colors that you might have missed. That's why I just go in circles when I'm doing this. And it's going to catch all the pixels. You see, if I missed one, I can just come over to it and just draw on it. And it's going to change it. Right? That's why I use continuous. If you do sample once, whatever pixel you click on first, that's the only sample it takes. So if you keep dragging and it misses a color, you can't keep going over it and get it, right? It's going to stay that color. If you let go and keep clicking, that's different because you're sampling new colors when you click. Right, but as far as drag clicking and dragging, you're never going to catch those pixels that you miss. Then we got background swatch. So with this one, what you want to do is you want to hold alt. And then you want to zoom in and sample whatever color you want to change. Then it'll change it to your foreground. And all you got to do is click this little button here. It switches it. So now that color's in your background. And then if I uh, change my foreground back to blue like we had it. Then it's going to change any color that's this color into this color. So we click and drag. You can see how it's not getting all this other yellow stuff over here. It's only getting that shade of yellow that I uh, sampled. Alright, after that we got the limits. So this determines the spread of the replaced color. And you got discontiguous, contiguous, and find edges. 
So I'm just gonna give you a quick sample of each one. Discontiguous. Then this is contiguous. And this is find edges. You can't really tell differences here, but there is a difference. So contiguous will only affect pixels that are touching the pixel under the crosshair. Discontiguous will affect any pixels that match the color you're sampling, even if they're not in the same area as the crosshair. And all these do is determines the spread of the replaced color, so how far they spread out, how many different pixels they affect. After that, we got tolerance. And this is just for choosing related colors. I like to think of tolerance is the range, um, the range of colors that it's going to affect. So if I turn the tolerance all the way up, it's going to replace more colors. If I turn it down, it's going to replace less colors. Then we got an option for anti-alias. We got our brush angle. And we also got pressure for size. If you're using a Wacom tablet or a different brand pen tablet. And that about does it for the color replacement tool, guys. If you've got any questions, make sure to comment down below. With that, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.